Hello, listeners. I'm your host, Amara, and this is Black Girl Gone, a true crime podcast. On this episode of Black Girl Gone, I tell the story of Nefertiri Trader, a 33-year-old woman missing since June 30th, 2014, from Newcastle, Delaware. On the day she vanished, Nefertiri left home to go to a local 7-Eleven. After making a few purchases, she returned to her house, but Nefertiri never made it inside her home. The next day, the items she bought were found outside her house, but no one ever saw Nefertiri again. Almost nine years later, she is still missing. What happened to Nefertiri Trader? And who is responsible for her disappearance? This is Nefertiri's story. Whenever I come across a story that I've never heard of that happened in my city or close to it, it reminds me how easily even cases that are happening in your city or around it, especially large cities, can be lost in the news cycle. When you live in a place that's inundated with violence on a daily basis, missing people are often overlooked or just forgotten. This week's story happened in Newcastle, Delaware, about 33 miles outside of Philadelphia, And for those of us who live in Philadelphia, parts of Delaware and New Jersey kind of feel like suburbs of the city, even though they are completely different states. And many Philadelphians move to those states to escape the violence that takes over certain parts of the city. But that doesn't mean that violence doesn't exist there, because violence exists everywhere. For the family of Nefertari Trader, the past almost nine years have been unbearable, without her, and without answers. Nefertiri's story was never major news. I don't even remember her story being on the news. Now, Although the local media here in Philadelphia did cover it, it was never a big enough story to break through all the other stories and really stand out. But after years of searching for her, Nefertiri's family is still looking for answers about who took her that night that she disappeared. Born on February 21st, 1981 in Delaware, Nefertiri Trader was the oldest of her siblings and was raised by her mother, Denise. She was affectionately known as Nephi by her loved ones, and she was described as a loving person with an outgoing personality who was well-known in her community. Her family said that she was a good person with a good heart, and her mother and siblings remember her as a person who go out of her way to help others without expecting anything in return. Her genuine nature and desire to help those around her left a lasting impression on those who knew her. And it's possible that Nephi's kind and compassionate personality was shaped by her upbringing. I mean, growing up as the oldest sibling often means that you take on additional responsibilities and set an example for your younger siblings. This may have instilled in Nephi a sense of responsibility and an empathy towards other people. From what I could gather, it appears that Nephi had lived in Delaware her entire life. We don't know much about Nephi's life growing up, but she eventually became a mom and had three children who she adored. Nephi had a job as a housekeeper at Christiana Hospital in Newark, Delaware, where she had worked for a few years and was known to be a hard worker and was in the process of being promoted to patient transport at the hospital. According to Denise, Nephi loved her job at the hospital. At the time, she lived in Newcastle, Delaware, in a subdivision called Saddlebrook, where she and her three children had a home. Nephi and her mother Denise shared a bond that was truly special and unbreakable. They would talk on the phone daily and even lived together for a few years, but Their bond was strengthened even further by the fact that they shared the same birthday on February 21st. This shared birthday gave them a connection that only a few people could truly understand. 
Nuffy appreciated her mother's unwavering love and support, and they always celebrated their special day together. It was something that they both looked forward to. By all accounts, Nuffy was living a normal life in Delaware with her children. But in 2014, everything changed for Nuffy and her family. At some time that year, Nuffy had to undergo a procedure, and so she took a leave of absence from work. At this time, she was still living in Newcastle with her children, and her cousin William Trader had also started staying with her. June 29th, 2014, started off as a normal day for Nephi and her family. She would typically drop her cousin off at work in the evening, and so that's what she did that night. When Nephi returned to the house after dropping her cousin off at work, the BET Awards had been on TV that night, and so once home, Nephi called her mom, Denise, so that they could talk about the awards and chit-chat like they always did. Like I said before, Denise and Nephi were very close, and they would speak to each other on the phone all the time. So this call was just a normal part of their routine. Nephi's children were also home that night. Well, we know that two of the children were there, but it's not clear if the third child was also home. However, one of the kids that were there was her 17-year-old son. Everyone who saw or spoke to Nephi that night, including her children and cousin, saw nothing out of the ordinary. She dropped William off at work and then went home and relaxed afterwards. Nephi's mother, Denise, who spoke to her over the phone that night while they were watching the awards, said they had a normal conversation, that nothing seemed out of the ordinary, and they talked and caught up like they always did. Even Nephi's neighbors, who may have caught a glimpse of her coming and going from her home, didn't notice anything strange or unusual that day. Everything seemed normal until the unthinkable happened and Nephi's life was turned upside down. In the early morning hours of June 30th, 2014, Nephi found herself struggling to fall asleep and so she made the decision to do something that she had done before when she couldn't sleep take a late-night trip to the 7-Eleven convenience store. Now, this wasn't an unusual activity for Nephi, especially since she had been on leave from work. At around 3.30 a.m., she left her home and made her way to her silver Acura and drove the short seven-minute drive to the 7-Eleven that was located on 723 Airport Road, a store that has since been closed. The events that took place after Nephi left her house are shrouded in mystery, and the details are primarily derived from witness accounts. It is unclear whether or not Nephi had any particular reason for the late night run other than just she couldn't sleep. And there are also questions like, did she encounter anyone on the way to the store or while she was there? Unfortunately, without concrete evidence, we may never know for sure, but we do know that once at the store, Nephi went inside and purchased a pack of cigarettes, two cups of coffee, and a loaf of bread. And then she got in her car and drove back to her house. But Nephi never made it back home. And it would be 17 hours before Nephi would be reported missing. When the details about what happened that night were revealed, it didn't take people long before they realized that Nephi was in danger. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. The older I get, the more I learn about myself, and it's life-changing. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because Sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk things through. BetterHelp connects you with licensed therapists who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Therapy has so many benefits and can give you so many things like learning positive coping skills or how to set boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable for your schedule. 
Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime with no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash girlgone today to get 10% off your first month. That's better. H-E-L-P dot com slash girl gone. On June 30th, 2014, 33-year-old Nefertari Trader left her home in Newcastle, Delaware to go to a local 7-Eleven. She made a few purchases and then headed back to her house. But before Nephi could enter her home, someone approached her and she never made it back inside. By the time the sun rose the next day, Nephi and her car had been gone for hours. But it would take several more hours before anyone in Nephi's family found out what happened. When Nephi left her home that night, it was supposed to be a routine errand, something she did frequently without any issues. But this time, things would take a terrifying turn. As with many cases like this, the details of what happened that night are somewhat murky. What we know comes from witnesses who were in the area at the time. And Nephi returned to her home shortly before 4 a.m. It's unclear what time exactly she left 7-Eleven, but what we do know is that a neighbor of hers reported hearing some sort of commotion coming from outside around that time. He said that when he looked out of his second floor window, he saw a man wearing a black shirt and tan shorts, and he was putting Nephi in the back seat of her own car. According to the neighbor, he wasn't exactly sure what was going on. He claimed that there was often a lot of activity happening at Nephi's home, and so that's why he didn't think much of it. But the person he saw wasn't someone that he recognized. Some reports have said that he heard screaming, but Regardless, he claimed that he didn't think anything was wrong, and so he didn't call the police to report what he saw. But Nephi and her car were now gone, and her family had no idea. Her cousin William worked overnight, and so he did not return to the home until the next day. Although it's not clear what time, nor is it clear how he got home, William said that when he got there, before even going in the house, he knew something was wrong. When he arrived home, he found the bread that Nephi had bought from the 7-Eleven on the ground. He told ABC6 in Philadelphia that, quote, the whole thing threw me off when I got there. There was a loaf of bread on the floor, on the ground, and her shoes and a pack of cigarettes was on the porch. And that's just not her. She would call you like, I'm leaving some cigarettes here, anything like that. And she didn't call nobody. Her phone was off. Now, when Nephi had left her home that morning, the kids were asleep. And so they may not have figured out that something was wrong right away. But Nephi's son did remember hearing something that night. According to her oldest son, he heard noises coming from downstairs. But when he went down there to check, there was nothing. and so. He went back upstairs. After William arrived home and found the bread and cigarettes, he had been trying to contact Nephi on her phone, but she wasn't answering. Each attempt went straight to voicemail and started adding to his concerns. I mean, this behavior was completely out of character for Nephi, who was usually quick to respond to messages and calls from loved ones, especially when her mom called. As the hours passed, her family became increasingly anxious. I mean, they had no idea where Nephi could be, and so they were left with nothing but their worst fears and worries. They knew that something was not right, but they had no idea what could be causing her to be gone like this. At around 6 p.m., Denise decided that she was going to go over to her daughter's apartment so that she could see what was going on and why she wasn't answering the phone. Denise said that at first, when she couldn't get Nephi on the phone, she thought maybe she had gone back to work from her leave. And so she waited until what would have been her time to get home from work to go over to Nephi's home. But when she arrived, 
she too found the loaf of bread, which she said appeared to be stomped on, and Nephi's cigarettes and shoes. Now, when it comes to the timeline, because of the lack of information about the details in this case, it's hard to know when her cousin first came home and saw the bread, and if that was before or after Denise. But when she saw the bread and her daughter's cigarettes and shoes, she knew that something had happened. Denise continued to try to reach out to her daughter, but the calls were going to voicemail. And so she went home hoping that she would hear from Nephi, but when another few hours went by, she decided that it was time to call the police. Sometime around 9.30 p.m. that night, Denise called and reported her daughter missing. After taking the missing persons report and obtaining statements from her family and Nephi's neighbor about what he saw that night, police issued a gold alert for Nephi. A gold alert is a public notification system typically used in the United States to help locate missing individuals who are elderly or disabled or suffer from some type of cognitive impairment, such as Alzheimer's disease or dementia. The alert is issued by local law enforcement agencies or state police when a person is reported missing and meets certain criteria for risk. The alert typically includes a description of the missing person, their last known location, and any other details that could help find them. And the purpose of the alert is to mobilize the community in the search for the missing person and increase their chances of return. But in Nephi's case, she didn't fit that criteria. But they issued a gold alert because they believed that she had possibly been abducted based on witness statements. However, from the outset, it was clear that this was going to be a challenging case. There were a number of factors working against the investigation, the first of which was the significant delay between the time that Nephi was last seen being forced into her car and when she was reported missing, a gap of 17 hours. But during this crucial time period, a lot of evidence was likely lost, making it more difficult for authorities to piece together what had happened. The lost evidence, however, wasn't the only obstacle that investigators faced. Nephi's case was also complicated by the fact that there were very few leads to follow. Without any solid clues or suspects, authorities had to rely on witness statements and other circumstantial evidence to try and make sense of what had happened to Nephi. And despite these challenges, her family was determined to do everything in their power to find Nephi and bring her home safely. They worked tirelessly to put together the available information, and they tried to explore every possible lead, hoping that something would break the case. And ten days after Nephi was reported missing, her family was growing increasingly desperate for answers. Even with the efforts of law enforcement officials, there had been no major breakthroughs in the case, and the search for Nephi seemed to be at a standstill. Determined to do everything that they could to help bring Nephi home, her family decided to hold a vigil in front of her house. They hoped that by coming together as a community and showing their support for Nephi, that they might be able to encourage anyone with information to come forward. The vigil was solemn, with candles lit for Nephi and her family members sharing their thoughts and prayers for her safe return. As they stood together that day, the sense of loss and uncertainty was palpable. Everyone present knew that the longer Nephi remained missing, the less likely it was that she would be found alive. Following the vigil, Nephi's family began to pass out flyers around the neighborhood. The flyers included pictures of Nephi along with her physical description and information about her disappearance. They hoped that by distributing these flyers that they might be able to reach someone who had seen or heard something that could break this case open. But days turned into weeks and then months, and the search for Nephi continued. Even with the tireless efforts and the unwavering determination of her family, there were no new leads in this case. As time wore on, 
The community's initial shock and concern began to give way to a deep sense of sadness. Everyone who knew Nuffy hoped against hope that she would be found safe and sound, but that hope was beginning to dwindle. The day after what would have been Nephi's 34th birthday, her family received some small measure of hope in the form of a $10,000 reward for information. The reward was announced by local law enforcement officials and provided by the municipality after Denise had been begging for a reward to be offered. Progress had been slow in the case in the months leading up to the reward announcement, and Nephi's family had grown increasingly more frustrated by what they perceived as a lack of urgency on the part of the police. They felt that there was more that could and should have been done to find Nephi and bring her home. Now, the announcement of the reward did offer a glimmer of hope. I mean, it was a small sign that someone was taking Nephi's disappearance seriously and was willing to do something to bring her home. For Nephi's family, the reward was to show them that they were not alone in their search for her and that the community was behind them in their efforts to find her. But despite the reward and continued efforts of Nephi's family, there was still no major news or information or leads in this case. And Nephi's disappearance remained a mystery. After nearly a year had passed, there were still no clues as to where Nephi was, and the investigation was losing momentum. In June 2015, the FBI announced that they were joining the case and offering an additional $20,000 reward for information leading to Nephi's whereabouts, bringing the total to $30,000. To aid in the search, They also revealed plans to install billboards along Interstate 95, stretching from Maryland to Connecticut. Nephi's family was happy to have the FBI's involvement, and they were hopeful that they would be able to provide them with some information that would lead to Nephi. But sadly, despite the FBI's involvement and their efforts to unravel this mystery surrounding her disappearance, the case continued to remain unsolved. And no new information or lead surfaced that could lead them to what happened to Nephi. The authorities said that they went through every available piece of evidence, interviewed witnesses, and pursued every possible angle to uncover the truth. But they found nothing. The lack of progress in the investigation had taken a toll on Nephi's loved ones, who remained hopeful for some answers or closure, but were left disappointed time and time again. The lingering uncertainty and unanswered questions only added to their anguish and left them with a sense of an unshakable despair. As weeks turned to months and then years, the trail seemed to grow colder, with no significant information in the investigation. The FBI and local authorities said that they remained committed to the pursuit of justice and continued to look for leads, but as the time went by, it became increasingly evident that this case was going cold. Nevertheless, Nuffy's loved ones refused to give up hope, and the community rallied together to support any search efforts any way that they could. The lack of progress did not stop Nuffy's family, and they remained determined to uncover what happened and bring Nuffy home. In 2017, three years after Nuffy vanished, she was officially declared dead. It was a hard decision for her family, but The hope was that moving the case to a homicide would allow more resources to be allocated to it. The declaration of Nephi's death marked the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. The family's grief and pain remained, but they now had a new sense of purpose in their pursuit of justice. 
They worked to keep Nephi's case in the public eye and to encourage anyone with information to come forward. The transition from a missing person case to a homicide investigation brought some renewed hope for the family. They hoped that with the resources of a homicide investigation, that there would be a greater chance of uncovering the truth about what happened to Nephi. They also hoped that the person or persons responsible for her disappearance would be brought to justice. As the investigation continued, her family remained steadfast in their determination to get those answers. They posted flyers and they used social media to spread awareness about the case. But nearly nine years later, Nephi is still missing and there has been no new information about Nephi's disappearance. Stories like Nefertiri's are always hard to tell. Not only is she missing, but there's such little information about her case. So many details are just unknown. And even though Nephi was legally declared dead, her family has not given up hope that they would find her and bring her home. They also have not given up hope that they will find out what happened to her and why. Nefertiri Trader was a 33-year-old mother of three when she disappeared. And for nine long years, her children have had to go on with their lives without her. And that is one of the saddest parts of the story. They went to sleep that night with their mom safe at home. And when they woke up in the morning, she was gone. They never saw her again. Someone knows who took Nephi. Nine years is a long time for the family of a missing person. But it's not long enough for the people who know what happened to forget. And so like all the stories of the missing, this story should be told and shared until Nephi is brought home and her family has answers. Nefertiri Trader was abducted from in front of her home in Newcastle, Delaware, in the early morning hours of June 30th, 2014. She was five foot six, and at the time of her disappearance, weighed 124 pounds. If you have any information about Nefertiri's abduction or the circumstances surrounding it, please call the Newcastle, Delaware Police or the FBI field office in Baltimore. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We'll be back next week with a brand new story. In the meantime, make sure you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter.